We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a podcast, a blog, and a YouTube channel that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 68 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. It is literally 942 on a Friday night as I record this, (laughs) and I was so busy today. Well, not earlier in the day, but I was busier later in the day. And I said, I got to get this part of my project done and then I'll go film or record the podcast. And so even though it's late, I hope I'm not making you wait because I'm showing up. I'm here. We're going to talk about how to plan out your DIY projects and finally get started and get it done. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I really struggled this week. This was a tough week for me because not only did I have a lot of anxiety about this new project, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, I had a lot of anxiety about it, but I've been doing a lot of cleaning. If you remember in my last episode about the bean weevils that got into my house, I've been spending a lot of time vacuuming. So every day when I am trying to get my day started, I end up not starting and just vacuuming the entire house. So I'll give you an update on that towards the end of the episode, but I didn't get a lot accomplished this week. There's a new project that I'm working on. I'm trying to do a shade canopy over my patio. Now my patio, I have a love hate relationship with. I like that we have outdoor space, but we've never been able to use it because not only do we have mosquitoes that bite during the day, but it gets really nasty and dirty out there. Like even after you pressure wash it, Within a couple of months, it all grows back, all the mold, the grime, the algae, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, I even if we have, well, I should say, even if we don't have the indoor-outdoor rug there, it still gets pretty dirty and disgusting. So I just end up pressure washing it, but I feel like I need to do it more often so that we can sit out there. But I've been wanting to do like um, some sort of protection there. Like I didn't want something that I think I was telling you this in the last episode. I don't want something that's permanent, like a pergola, because I don't want anything that's going to block the sun coming into the family room that's right there off of the patio. So this idea of the sunshade is perfect. Because when you want sunlight coming into your living room, this and you're not using the outside canopy, you can pull it back, you can retract it. And I feel like I need cables because (laughs) I'm using four by four by eight foot tall pressure treated wood. And I guess I didn't realize like, how am I going to actually pull this thing back and forth? This is a pretty tall canopy. I'm not done it yet, but I'm already speculating that I'm going to have to get a little step stool or something. But anyway, I want to be able to pull that back and still have the sun come into the family room. And then if we're out there using it, I want to be able to pull that shade and keep out the sun but then also maybe keep out the mosquitoes by putting some mosquito netting around. So I'm, I'm drafting things out and I really struggle <laughs> with figuring out how am I going to do this? Where am I going to do this? Am I going to do it in the back of my shed? Am I going to do it in the yard? And as I was looking around, I thought, I don't really have a lot of space in the yard. I don't have a lot of space to put an eight by eight. I mean, the space is there. But I feel like it's just another thing that I would throw in the middle of the yard. And I didn't want to do that. So I realized the patio would be perfect. (laughs) So this was like, let's say Monday. This was Monday, Tuesday-ish. No, let's say Monday. Monday, I decided, okay, we're going to put this project, this shade canopy over the patio. And then I realized, wait a minute, I can't actually build anything here because it's full of mold and algae and discoloration. So I need to clean that. So basically, because this is a new project that I've never done before, I had some hesitation and I really didn't know how to move forward. And so I felt like I wasted a lot of time in my day when I could have been working on this, but instead I felt, I guess, not sure of how to actually get started. So I did actually do an episode. If you go back to episode 30, I will leave a link down below. There's a an episode that I did called, Do You Struggle to Get Started Too? 
So if you're somebody that struggles to get started on your projects, then by all means, please go back and listen to that episode. And I probably should have re-listened to it myself. But as I was thinking about what we're going to talk about tonight, I wanted to turn it into something that we can actually follow step by step. How do you get started with a DIY project? How do you plan it out? How do you finally get started and go from idea to completion? Because even though I get, you know, I get like problems. uh, I mean, I struggle with getting started as well. I do end up pulling off most of my projects. (laughs) I will admit I'm usually late. If you are a brand that is listening, I'm so sorry. My projects are always late. I never plan accordingly to whatever date I say that material is going to be due. It just never works out that way. But I realize that I do have a process that I go through to get my projects done. And even though I, I do feel just as you do, where I have trouble getting started, you know, taking that final plunge and actually getting the materials out and getting started, I, I do have a process. And I want to share that with you today. So that if you're someone who struggles with getting started on projects, maybe you might hear something today that will help you move forward in your projects because sometimes it's just hard to get started. You have so many ideas in your mind. In fact, there was someone who had emailed me recently and when people, new people subscribe to my, uh, to my blog, I will ask them in the very first email they get, what's the biggest DIY struggle that you have? And do you want to know what most people say? Their response usually is getting started. And there's a lot of reasons, as I said in episode 30, why people struggle with getting started. But what I feel is the remedy is properly planning things out. And even though, like I mentioned, I still struggle, I do plan. And sometimes I get frustrated because it takes me so long to plan. But I'm going to walk you through my process so that maybe you might learn something. So the first step that I do is I I write down my idea. Usually I will either text it to myself, I'll email it to myself, because I don't want to forget. (laughs) I don't want to forget that I came up with that great idea. You know, life is so busy and there's so much stuff going on in the news. Like right now, we are all thinking about, um, you know, what happened in Uvalde, Texas. I, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to address it on here. And I think this is a good point to talk about it real quick. Um, I just, my heart goes out to these people. And I feel so horrible that every time you turn on the news, there's something else that just is happening with people just randomly getting killed for no reason other than just hate. And because we get so distracted, and we should, we rightly should get distracted by this, you know, we shouldn't just tune it out. Because we get distracted by what's happening in the world, some of the ideas that we come up with, we kind of forget about it because stress takes over and we start thinking about our children. We start thinking about other things that we have to do. And we get into, at least I have been getting into some debates on Facebook. People are posting about, you know, gun control and, and some people are saying, put guns in the hands of teachers. And so there's all these debates. And so I sometimes get myself distracted. And I did earlier this week because of this, I just wasn't in the mood to work in addition to not really knowing how I was going to move forward on this project. But one thing I say is if you text it to yourself, if you email it to yourself, even though you're distracted by what's happening in the world and with life, you will see it and you will be reminded later, hey, that is something that I want to do. And I'm reminding myself that I'm going to do it. And it's okay if you don't get started right away, right? Like if you are taking a mental health break because of everything that's going on, or maybe you've got some family drama going on, it's okay to come back to your idea later. This is part of the plan. Just the fact that you wrote it down is part of the getting started in making sure that that project actually happens. Um, I will say that I really hope that there's something that can be done about gun control. I am for gun control. I don't believe and I, I know, I'm sorry, I'm jumping back to this. I don't believe that, uh, you know, necessarily putting certain things in place are going to prevent everything from happening. But I do think that if we have reasonable gun control, that it will make a difference. It's not going to be 100%, nothing is, but it will make a difference. Um, 
But anyway, my heart is with the people in Texas and not even just the people in Texas. I mean, friends and family who are thinking about this, who are worried about sending their kids to school. I know that I've been looking at my kid, my uh, 10 year old, not even just 10 year old, all of my boys, but especially my 10 year old, I've been looking at him differently in the last few days. And, you know, like tonight he came up and uh, just gave me a kiss and said, I love you just in passing. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, these poor parents in Texas are not getting that anymore. They they are not going to be able to get a kiss from their child and just randomly be told and, you know, a happy sing song voice, you know, I love you. And it's, I don't know, I think that's just been weighing on me this week too. So if you have a week where you're just not really feeling like you want to do a project, it's okay. Because if there's other things that are going on that are things that are occupying your mind, it's okay to take a break. For me, it didn't feel okay because this project that I'm doing, the Shade Canopy, is a sponsored project by Aero Fastener because I'm going to be using some of their grommets. Uh, so, it, so for me, it's it's not something I can just put off. I actually have to get it done because they're they're waiting for it. But for you who most likely listening to this, you're not going to have somebody that's waiting on this for the most part. So if you need time to take a mental health break, just to consume the news and just be aware of what's going on, that's okay. But make sure that you at least write down your idea. So later when you're ready to get to it, you can get back to it and start planning out and move to step two. So step two is actually sketching out your idea. And what I like to do is either use like an iPad and just draw it on an iPad or use scratch paper to draw and scratch it, scratch out, scratch out, (laughs) sketch out what that project is going to look like. So when I started designing this shade canopy in my mind, I had an idea of what I was going to do. I had seen something similar online when I was looking up awnings for my shed, when I thought I was going to do an awning to protect the door from the water that was getting into the doors, which I'll give you an update on that in just a moment. But when I was looking these canopies up, I thought, hmm, this is actually something I I think I can do. And I don't necessarily have to do it like these canopies. I can do it myself in a different way with four by fours and planters. And if I get some some, uh, wire rope and hooks and all these things, I can make this happen. So that's what I did. I started sketching it out on paper. And when I realized "Mm, this is not going to tell me measurements, then I actually used SketchUp. And I think I'd mentioned this before. SketchUp is a program that you can use. Um, It's a CAD. It's a CAD program that's free. You can have the paid version or you can have the free version. And it allows you to draft out what it is that you have in your mind. What is it that you want to build? What is it that you want to make? And if if you put in the correct measurements, you can start to figure out how this is going to come together. And it'll give you some measurements so you'll know exactly where things need to be placed. And it's just a really great program. It takes, I think, you know, it's a steep learning curve to use it. But if you use a site like, well, it used to be called lynda.com. Now it's called linkedinlearning.com, I believe. You can actually do a training program, like a three, four, five hour training program on how to use SketchUp. And I highly recommend it. If you're someone who likes to to build, and I'm not saying building like huge pieces of furniture, but if you like to make things with wood and you want to know how it's going to fit together, you can plan it out in SketchUp so that when you're ready to get started on your project, all you need to do is look at the plan that you made. But in order to know how to use the program, you have to do a training program, like you have to. And even if it's just a basic program, like the LinkedIn learning, it's enough to get you by. Um, Because I did that training, I'm able to sketch out the entire canopy and realize like, oh, okay, well, maybe I need to make this a little taller, or maybe I need to like line up these grommets so it slides on the wire smoothly. And I think that planning is so important when you're doing any kind of project with raw materials, like you have to plan it out. And even when I did my vanity, this is before I even knew how to use SketchUp. When I had built my vanity, my bathroom vanity, I did that on paper. (laughs) I didn't do any kind of SketchUp. I wish I had, because then I would have figured out some of the things that went wrong. But overall, it was 
it was okay. Paper was okay. So don't feel like you have to use SketchUp. There's also a site called Homestyler. I may have mentioned it to you before. This is great for room makeovers. They have like a whole library full of furniture. So if you're planning out maybe changing your living room, don't necessarily feel like you have to go and move your sofa all the way across the room to see what it's going to look like. You can use some of these online free programs to get in there and ch and change your furniture around and see what it looks like before you go and move everything around. So sketch out your idea, whether it's on paper, iPad, home styler, or SketchUp. Step three is to do your research first. And this is part of sketching out your idea, like it's built in with step two. But what I like to do sometimes is not research. <laughs> I I think I think I told you last week in my email newsletter, if you subscribe to my email newsletter, you will know, because I said it in the very first sentence, I sometimes like to skip research because I want to think that I am so creative that the idea that I came up with just doesn't exist. And I will not research something, depending on what it is, so that I'm not discouraged when I see that it has already been done 10,000 times. <laughs> but most times you want to research things because if you research it, it actually helps you figure out some things before you get started. Like, for example, I did search for a uh, canopy, shade canopy, and there was something on, I think it was like Better Homes and Gardens, and they had done a tutorial, not so much on a shade canopy, but it was, I think they had used four by four posts and they had put them in planters and they were just stringing lights, you know, they were just using it for string lights. But because of the way that they inserted the planters, they had used two boards with some, some uh, screws in order to keep it straight and level. And I thought, oh, okay, so that's how I'm going to have to do it. Because I was thinking like, I know that I'm going to use the quick set concrete, but how am I going to make sure that that level, that post is secure and I know I need to brace it in some way. What's the best way to brace it? So by reading that, it gave me the idea, oh, I need to put two pieces of wood right across that planter and just screw it to the post, let it set, let it dry. The quick concrete starts to set in like 30 minutes. And then once it's set for maybe like an hour, I can take off those braces and then move on to the next planter. So it there's a lot of value in doing your research first. So don't feel sometimes that, you know, you're procrastinating or you're, you're moving too slowly. The research phase is actually pretty important. Don't skip that. Number three is very important. Do your research first. Step four is to create a materials list. So now that you've done your research, you have a pretty good idea of what tools and materials you're going to need. What items do you already have? But what things do you still need to buy? And can you get it from Home Depot or Lowe's? Or do you need to order it from Amazon? or some other place? And is it going to get here in time for you to start? And this is something that I've been dealing with with this project, because as the scope of the project has changed, as I started putting it all together in my head and on paper, I realized, oh, some of these items I don't actually need. I ordered them from Amazon, and now I've got to send them back. But these other things I needed. And so I didn't even have like one bulk order. I just was ordering things day by day by day. <laughs> and I'm like, Serena, come on. Like you can't keep sending these people to your house every day because you just remembered one more thing that you had to get. So it is helpful if you can just make one list when you think your project is pretty good in terms of its planning, making one list and then knowing, okay, these are the things I can get from Home Depot. These are the things I can get from Amazon. I might have to go to Lowe's to get this and make sure that you know which items can easily be returned. So I had ordered, at some point I thought I was going to use like these bungee clips. So I went on to Amazon. This was maybe last week, ordered like two bags of 30 bungee clips. So I have like 60 bungee clips and realized my project isn't even really going to need them. I don't think I, I might. I let me take that back. <laughs> <I'm>, <coughs> oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like about to speak and you know, when you swallow your spit wrong and it just gets caught in your throat, <laughs> but I actually might need them now that I'm thinking about it because I've got these 
well, what I was able to get done today is I did do the four by four posts and the planters. Those are done. And I might even go back and get maybe a couple more bags of the quick setting concrete. But I might even use these, uh, these little bungee uh, bungee clips. I don't know. But if I can't use them, I, I'm just going to send them back. They weren't very expensive. But some things that you order, you know, you may not even know whether you want to do white or pink. And here's my opinion. If you're able to easily return these two paints, I mean, it just depends on where you get them from, then by all means, order both if you can afford to order both. And that's what I did when I went to Home Depot and I was buying some different clips and connectors in order to get this canopy, the shade canopy connected to these four posts. I didn't know which kind of connectors I was going to use. And so I just bought extra. I mean, it wasn't any problem for me financially to buy extra. And I figured whatever I don't use, I can return. Just to let you know, I mean, you probably know this already because you love projects as much as I do. But Home Depot has a really good return policy. Lowe's is probably the same. But whatever credit card that you use to buy that item from Home Depot, as long as you have that card with you, when you go to take something back, if you don't need it, they'll, all you have to do is scan your card and the item will come up. You don't even have to have your receipt. If it's been more than 90 days, then you can still take those items back. They're not going to be able to locate it on your card to give you money back on your card, but they will give you store credit. So, I mean, if you're like me, you're going to be in Home Depot all the time anyway. So I'm okay with store credit because <laughs> I'm just going to put it right back into their, in their pockets. You know what I mean? But anyway, make sure that you can return whatever items that you're, you're not going to use and buy extra if you need to, because there's nothing worse than being in the moment of a project. And maybe you thought you needed this hook, which was half an inch, but really you need one that's an inch. Well, if you're not sure, buy both and then just return the one that you don't need. Um, another thing is to download my ultimate materials checklist. And you can actually get this by subscribing to my blog. It's literally just like a three or four page document that I tried to think of every possible imaginable craft DIY woodworking tool material that, that we would need. <laughs> and of course, I have some slots there for things for you to actually fill in. But you can use this to check off what it is that you need. And that way, when you're going for your materials, you're ordering them online, you just have a list of everything you need. And of course, there's always going to be something that you forget. It's okay. Just order it. If you're getting it from Amazon, usually with Amazon Prime, you're getting it within, you know, one to two days. Sometimes you can even get it same day, which is amazing. So the next thing, now that you've got your materials, you want to actually draft out the steps before you do any work. Now, there was a friend of mine who used to be in my blogging group. And I remember when she talked about writing out like her blog post before she actually does the project. I thought that was really weird. <laughs> she said, I'll write the blog post before I actually do the project. And I thought, that's strange. Like, why would you do that? But I've started doing that lately, like in the last six months or so. And I did it for this project, the Canopy Project. Before I even got started, I, I just drafted out all the materials I did step one, step two. And by doing that, it allowed me to think through what am I doing first? What am I doing second? Do I, do I need to do the post first or do I need to do the canopy first? Or when I go to connect the wire rope, where am I connecting that? Because I still have to get the shade canopy attached to the wire. So do I need, like, what do I need to do first, second, and third? And it actually helped me figure out all the things I needed to do. Because when you're thinking about your project, it's it's allowing you to troubleshoot anything that could possibly come up. You're not going to think about, you're not going to get every possible thing, but it is going to allow you to see what am I doing first, second, third. And <laughs> I actually realized, whoa, wait a minute, I need to pressure wash my patio. That is like the ultimate number one, because I can't build any shade canopy on that dirty patio. I just can't. And so that's what I had done on Tuesday. <laughs> I spent like three hours pressure washing. And here's the thing. I didn't even just do the patio. I figured the whole back of the house, the siding had not been cleaned. So let me get some spray stuff 
and some like mold and mildew cleaner. And I'll spray that down, let it set for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to go through and like rinse that off because I'm thinking of the project, you know, I'm going to take like after pictures and before pictures. And I want my after pictures to look nice. Well, I've got mold on my siding. So you know what I'm saying? So actually sitting down and thinking about what it is that I have to do in order to create a great project allowed me to realize, whoa, I have to, I got to take care of that siding. Let me spray that. And then when that's drying, I'll go through and pressure wash. And that'll be what I do on Tuesday. So get into the habit of doing this. Think through your project and don't feel like, doing this is procrastinating or wasting your time. It's not, it's really important. And it's actually some of the most important work that you do before you even start putting things together. This is very, very important. And you'll find the value of it as you know, you keep working on your projects. Also, another thing too, it allowed me to figure out where the wire rope stops have to be. So you'll see this project probably in the next week or so. But in planning out this wire rope canopy, I knew that some of those wires would have to be secured because if they're just gliding along on the wires with like little hooks, how's that, how's that going to (laughs) work? So it was, you know, walking through the steps allowed me to see, okay, I want to put permanent rope stops here, which is basically just like a little metal piece and you have to crimp it on there. Here are the places where I want little wire rope stops. And then... The other locations, I want the kind that can actually be like loosened up and, you know, they're, 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 they're not permanent. And as I'm thinking now, I'm like, wow, how am I even going to get up there? I'm going to need a stool. (laughs) It's eight feet tall. So, you know, you work through these things and you figure it out as you go. The next thing, step six is to create a schedule of what's going to happen and when, and this is the part that I like because For me, it helps me to get unstuck, right? If I know that, okay, Tuesday, we're going to pressure wash and that's all I'm going to hold myself responsible to. I'm not going to start the project. I'm literally just going to clean. That's it. I'm going to do the cleaning and I'm going to feel accomplished at the end of the day because I got that part done. So then what am I going to do on Wednesday? And this is where I actually failed this week because I was still stuck on how's this going to work? How's how are these wires and ropes going to be connected? And I was stuck on that. So I just used Wednesday for planning, Thursday for planning. (laughs) I did some planning earlier today. And finally I said, Serena, stop it. Three o'clock. I got out there and I started putting the four by fours in the planters with the concrete. And I got that done tonight. So now that that's been done, I can set my schedule for tomorrow, which is Saturday, Memorial Day weekend. It's, you know, we have nothing planned for tomorrow. So it's a day when I'll be able to, hopefully we have good weather too. It's a day when I'll be able to move to the next step, which is connecting the wires, crossing my fingers that how I planned it out is how it's going to work. I just need to find a stool to get up there. (laughs) Um, So anyway, make a schedule. And if you know what's going to happen and when, it's easier to work in shorter increments and it's easier to not hold yourself accountable for like getting everything done. So if you know you've got six or seven different tasks, break them out into different days. Like, okay, today's Tuesday. I know I need to get the pressure washing done. That's what I'm going to do. Wednesday, maybe I'm just going to use that for planning to make sure I know how big the fabric has to be. How am I going to connect the fabric? And Wednesday or Thursday, this is what I'll do. And if you skip a day, you skip a day, but try to create a schedule of what's going to happen. Create a list, you know, just something that you can check off. I love check boxes. So whenever I have all of my tasks for that project listed out on just like, I'll use, what is it? I have a Samsung phone, so I'll use notes and I'll just put it in notes And I love tapping that little checkbox and seeing the line go through and it gets grayed out. I love that because then that gives me even more encouragement to keep going, keep getting some of these tasks done. Um, But if I had three tasks for the day for today and I got it done, then great. Today, the only thing that I wanted to get done was to get the four by four post and the planters. And I got that done. So I feel like I'm accomplished and it's making me feel less stressed because I'm actually making progress. So step seven 
is to take pictures and video clips along the way. I always do this, of course, because it's going on my channel. It's usually sponsored. But for you, if you're not somebody who's working with brands and, you know, you're not showing it off to people and reels, Facebook reels, Instagram reels, you might forget to take pictures. And I wholeheartedly think everybody should take pictures before pictures, process pictures, and after pictures, because you won't remember how, first of all, you may not remember how you did the project. <laughs> Secondly, is as your house changes, you won't remember how it looked before you got started. And to me, I love looking back on pictures of my house, even just looking at the side yard and seeing, oh my gosh, we had all those little shrubs over there. Like your house just looks so different. So when you document, it's fun to look back a year later, two years and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe our, our patio looked like that. Now we have this cool shade canopy and it just looks more homey and cozy and we can actually use it because there's mosquito netting. You just have to take it and document take the pictures, document, and appreciate the work that you've done along the way. And then step eight is to actually complete your project. <laughs> you can estimate at this point how long you think it'll take. I suck at this. I really can never estimate. Like if my brand, Aero Fastener, were to contact me today, and sometimes they do this, they'll email me, hey, Serena, I just want to check up on you with the project. I really hate having to say, oh, yep, it'll be done by Monday. Because then Monday comes and there's something that I didn't anticipate or it took longer. And then I have to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be Friday. And they're usually pretty good, but I still feel bad. It's, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't feel professional when you have to keep changing the, the goalpost. You know what I mean? But it's DIY. <laughs> I just can't predict when it's going to be done. I'm, I'm doing my best here. So complete your project, work in increments if you can. You may not have four, five, six hours. If all you have is one hour, let's say you've got to pick your child up at 6 p.m. and you only have two hours, right? It's four o'clock and you have two hours. Well, what can you get done in that two, that two hours? Look at your, your task list and see if you're painting a piece of furniture. Well, maybe you can get the second coat on in that two hours right? And sometimes we fool ourselves into thinking, I need a whole day. I need a whole week. We do this with our cleaning, right? How many times have you said to yourself, I just wish I had an entire week to like declutter my whole house? Well, come on. <laughs> it's never going to happen. We are never just going to have a whole week. Because even if we did have a week, we'll find something else to do because it's we don't really want to declutter, right? But if we do it in small increments, one hour here, one hour there, two hours there, then we make progress. And I think there was a quote that I learned a long time ago, and I may be butchering it. I think it's, it goes something like, um, baby steps count, baby steps count as long as you're moving in the right direction. And that's what I like to believe whenever you're working in increments, it doesn't matter if you only have an hour or two hours, you know, today you did the second coat of paint, maybe tomorrow you'll put on the hardware right? You put on some new knobs or whatever it is that you're doing to, for your project. For me tomorrow, I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that I can get the ropes attached, the wire ropes. And then probably Sunday, well, Sunday, do we have anything going? I don't think we have anything going on Sunday until later in the evening, but, or later in the afternoon. But if I get started early enough, I can finish sewing the, the uh, sunbrella fabric that's going to be used for the canopy. So, make good use of your time and don't feel that you need a whole week or a whole day or a whole month. Just do it in increments. Step nine is you have to clean up your project area. I fail at this so many times. Like right now, my shed on the inside, I should start calling it my studio. My studio on the inside is a mess. <laughs> it's not crowded or anything like that. Like I'm not stepping, well, no, I am kind of stepping over some things here and there, but I was looking at it yesterday and I thought, Serena, you never cleaned up after like finishing the electrical, like whatever the projects were that I have been working on, I just haven't cleaned up. And on that workbench area in my studio, let me call it my shed. It's my shed. Come on, studio, studio sounds too formal. It's my shed. But in my shed, on that workbench area, there's no rhyme or reason in there. It's just all cluttered because there's tools that I need 
and I don't want to take them back to the garage to store them where they belong because the garage is kind of messy anyway. So I want to keep them in the shed, but because I don't have any organization yet in the shed, they're just all laid out and there's no rhyme or reason. And there's a lot of dust too, because when I made that, that Jenga game, it created a lot of dust. Now I do have a filtration system that I bought. I think I paid maybe like 350 for it. It's something that can be mounted on the ceiling, which was originally my idea. But I think you can also just put it in the corner. I need to turn that thing on because whenever I cut with, you know, whenever I cut wood, all the little particles that float around in the air, that's its job is to suck up all those small particles so that you don't have dust on every single surface. And this week when I was trying to sew these panels of Sunbrella, uh, it's not outdoor fabric. No, it's outdoor fabric, but it's like, what is it? It's not upholstery fabric, but they call it like awning fabric or a sail. I think it's like a sailing, what is it? Like a sailing fabric. Anyway, as I was working in there, there was dust getting all over the fabric. Now it's not going to ruin the fabric. It's outdoor fabric. I could probably just, you know, wipe it off. It's not a big deal, but it was so dusty in there. It was so messy that I, I couldn't even work in there. I had to go take the fabric inside the house and pin the fabric and do what I needed to do. So I was like, okay, we have to get that, that uh, filtration system up and running because I can't cut in here and then have dust lying everywhere. I just don't like that. So cleaning up your project area is so important And this. I think this is something that I really want to work on and have a place to put the tools back, empty the trash, pick up the packaging, take your final pictures. And then for step 10, return any unused materials. I also fail at this <laughs> because remember, I told you in the previous steps, sometimes I buy more than what I need. Sometimes I'm not sure which direction a project is going to go. And I will buy two things of something because I'm not sure which one I'm going to use once I'm actually doing the project. But sometimes I don't return the unused items and they'll sit for months. And not only does that waste money because you could get that money back and go buy other materials that you need, but you're taking up space in your garage, like you're just, or your shed or wherever it is that you're doing projects, you're storing that stuff that you didn't need. And it can build up. So for step 10, make sure that you return any unused materials. I'm going to start working on this so that I can do this. And again, Home Depot will take all of those. Just make sure that you have the credit card that, that you used. If not, get store credit, you're going to use it. So those are the 10 steps generally that I use when I do projects. But even so, I still get stuck. I get stuck. Sometimes I get to that research phase and... I am afraid to move forward. I will admit that to you. That's kind of what was happening to me in part this week because I didn't want to ruin this fabric. This fabric that I bought, oh my gosh, it was $30 a yard. Like it's insane. And I bought, I, and I bought six yards. That's $180 plus whatever shipping because it wasn't free shipping. I got it from this company called SaleRight. And of course they didn't have free shipping and taxes. It came to like, $210 or something like it wasn't insane. It's a great fabric. It's black and white striped. And I was going to, I was going to purchase. Well, originally I purchased it because I thought I was going to do awnings over my, my door and my, my side door and my French doors. But then guess what? The doors have been fixed. I think I may have reported to you last week, the doors have been fixed, but I don't think we had any significant rain at that time to tell you whether or not it worked. But if you remember, I had purchased a door sill flashing plastic thingy, mold thingy that goes underneath of your door. And it has these little lips on it that prevent the water from going underneath your door or to the corners of your door, which is what most leaking likes to do at doors. It worked. It worked. We've had two big rainstorms. In, well, in fact, I think today, it rained and there's no leaking. <laughs> you have no idea how excited I am about that. So once I get this canopy done, the next thing is I can finally get some flooring for my shed. And then after the flooring, then I'm probably going to figure out what kind of workstations that I want to set up in there. Working with this fabric for the shade canopy made me realize I need a, 
a huge space where I can set up my sewing machine. If I need to put wood, fabric, whatever I need to do, I need like a center, probably like a four by eight table or something that has a little bit of uh, width to it because the fabric, I mean, I just have small tables in there right now temporarily, but I need a space like a work table, workbench that I can just spread out. So that's coming too. It's, it, it's just a lot and it just takes so much time to plan out how to get all of these things done, but I'm enjoying it. Now, the situation with the weevils, oh my gosh, guys, this has been driving me crazy. The pest control people came they were not helpful at all. The guys that came are not the usual guy that comes to do the spraying. He does my quarterly. This guy, Danny, I love Danny. Danny is amazing. He's with uh, Bug Boys. And if you remember back in, I think it was like episode nine, 10 or something like that. I interviewed the head uh, owner of the company. Well, Danny is the guy who generally has been the one to come and do my quarterly pest control. Well, there was two guys that came that were not Danny. <laughs> and I was okay with that just because I wanted to get on their schedule as soon as possible to have them come in and spray. Well, Danny didn't come. And these guys, I didn't really care for them too much. They didn't spray. He said, well, if I spray, I'm just afraid. First of all, he, he didn't really have a personality. And he was just real quiet and wasn't really helpful. He said, well, if I spray, you know, it may cause the weevils to to leave the area and go somewhere else in the house. And I'm thinking, well, they're already in other parts of the house. They've been here since January and it's May. So they've had five months to multiply. And, you know, who knows, maybe they were attached to our socks or they got into the vents, but I've been finding them in the other parts of the house. One here, one there, and it's driving me mad. Now, thankfully, you know, they're, they're not harmful, but regardless of whether they're harmful, ants aren't harmful, but I don't want them in my house either. So yeah, so anyway, after after those other two guys had left, Danny called me and he's like, Hey, I see that your service was just completed. What do you what do you think of those guys? You know, I think they might be new to the company. I told Danny, I said, Danny, I love you. I need you back. <laughs> he said, Well, whenever you need your next service, just request me. Just just make sure you schedule it on a, on a day I'm available. And I'm like, Yes, yes. So I told him. This is what the guys did. They didn't spray. They didn't want to spray. He gave me six glue traps. <laughs> I told the guy, give me as many glue traps as you possibly can. He gave me six glue traps. I told Danny, he said, I would have given you a lot more. <laughs> I said, I know you would have, Danny. I know you would have. So Danny said, call back in about a week, you know, see if the things that you're doing, the diatomaceous earth, the glue traps, see if those make a difference. But call back in another week and I will come out. We will spray your son's bedroom because I did find a few in his bedroom. And we'll spray his his bedroom. We'll spray the pantry. And honestly, at this point, I want him to just spray the whole house. I don't like doing chemicals. I really do like doing the diatomaceous earth and stuff like that. But, oh gosh, I don't know. I, I don't know what the solution is. But um, I... I just know that I want to get this taken care of. And I think vacuuming every day, making sure that everything stays in the containers and just being mindful of, okay, I, I'm every room I go into, I'm looking for weevils. <laughs> Thankfully, you know, I've not seen a lot of them elsewhere, but if I see them somewhere else far from the pantry, I'm like, come on, are you like, really? You eat grains and rice. What in the world are you doing here? And I found one in my bedroom tonight sitting right on my charger next to my bed on the floor. And so I think what might happen, they might be coming from the vents. I don't know if maybe they got into the vents and they're just traveling through the vents. So now I want to call a company and have them come and like disinfect my vents and do the vent cleaning and all that. And it's just, oh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. But, you know, I think if I'm on top of it and get the bug guy in, then you know, hopefully like in another month or two, you know, I've broken the cycle and it, we won't have a problem. And, you know, it could be like, you never totally get rid of ants. All you do is make sure that you're cleaning up, you're not leaving honey on the counters. And if you have one or two, then 
that's what it is. They, they can't get in and multiply because they don't have a food source. So maybe that's all it is now. Maybe we just have a new pest in the house. We have to get, you know, Willie the weevil. <laughs> maybe I need to just embrace the weevils. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's been kind of driving me crazy. And that's been kind of messing with my psyche this week too, as I'm like trying to get this project done. All I can think about is I got a vacuum. I got a vacuum today. I got a vacuum. Oh, wish me luck there. Anyway, what are you working on? Are you working on any projects that you're really proud of? I do get emails from a few people when they send me projects. I love to see what you're working on. Definitely email me back. I like to know that I'm not talking to myself here out here in podcast land. And uh, next week, we'll have another episode. It's just whatever's going to be happening. Hopefully, I'll be able to share with you the finished project of the shade canopy and lessons learned along the way and what worked and what didn't work. I do have to go back and get some more of the quick set concrete. That stuff is actually pretty awesome, by the way. I mean, you literally don't have to mix it. You just put it in, you know, you you dump out the entire bag. I mean, it's a 50, 50 pound bag. And I wasn't sure how much water to to put inside of the planter, but the back said like, two and a half quarts. And I'm like, well, how much is that? And then I'm realizing like, oh, okay, wait a minute. A gallon is four quarts. So it's a little less than a gallon. Cool. Cool. Let me go ahead and put this in here. And there's no mixing required. Like it will set in about 30 minutes. You'll see it starting to, to harden up and that's it. There's no mixing. So if in your yard, if you're trying to like do some sort of decorative lights, or you want to create a seating area or something around maybe your fire pit, get some of these planters. The planters I got from Home Depot were like these plastic, like these resin 20 inch planters. They were about maybe 17, $18 each. And the posts that I got were like eight foot posts. And you literally set it in there, just put some wood on it to brace it. You'll see this in the video and pour the concrete in and pour the water. And then that's it. So, you know, and then you can do your string lights and just have clips and attach it. I mean, it's a really easy project you can get done in literally like a couple hours. It, it, it was that easy. I don't know why I was stressing so much about whether it was going to work, but I haven't done the ropes yet, the rope, the wire rope. So still crossing my finger, that, <laughs> my fingers that it actually works. All right, guys, that's what I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode talking about getting your projects planned out. Don't be afraid to forsake all other projects and just focus on one or two at a time because it can drive you crazy to think that you have to get everything done at once. Find one, two, maybe three small projects, maybe one big project and just focus all your attention on that. Plan it, research it. Don't feel bad if you're researching and researching and researching because you'll have more knowledge of what to do and what not to do once you're ready to move on to executing the project. All right, guys, I will talk to you next week. Enjoy whatever you get into for Memorial Day weekend. And I want to thank all of the service members who had given their life for this country for Memorial Day weekend. And it's really not about, you know, the cookouts and polls and all that. It really is about just observing the people who gave their life for this country. And that's huge. So let's observe those people and let's enjoy the time with friends and family and be safe this weekend. And hopefully we will free. (laughs) All right, guys, I will see you next episode.